If you guys have been lucky enough to stumble across this plumberparts.co.uk video all about indirect and direct hot water cylinders, then great, we're gonna get down to that any minute now. Before we do, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to our videos by clicking in the link in the corner that's appearing right now. Thank you. And also follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well, where we do loads of competitions every week. Anyway, remember everyone, to hold tight. See thee. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber. Right then guys, thanks ever so much for coming along to this video. Sorry we haven't uploaded a video in a little while. Lots have been going on lately. I've had a cold for a start, and that just stops everything from happening in the whole wide world. It's one of them things, isn't it? Men get colds. I got my brother to see me through, as they say. So we've got a lot of videos coming up in the near future. We've got a video on kind of inline water traps, even though trap isn't really the word for it. We've also got a video on potable hot water expansion vessels as well, which is gonna be really interesting. And there's also associated competitions with them as well. Anyone want an Apple Watch, better subscribe and keep on watching. But we've had quite a few questions. In fact, if I get out my little questions tub, or as someone pointed out quite nicely a few weeks ago, that's not a top me, that's a dry lining box. Who said the old ways of doing things were dead? So we've had quite a few apprentices over the last couple of months and we've kept all the video um, suggestions that you guys send us through in that little tub there. And we've had quite a few of the same question from apprentices. And it is, what is the difference between an indirect and a direct hot water cylinder? Now, if you're watching this from outside of the UK, this is probably not gonna mean anything to you. But in the United Kingdom, all right, this is a pretty standard way for us to heat up and deliver water to the taps for washing in and all the rest of it. So I'm gonna have two tanks appear either side of me right now, just like this. On this side, we're gonna have our indirect tank and on this side, we're gonna have our direct tank. So the differences are, and let's firstly look at the indirect tank. The indirect tank next to me here has usually an immersion heater in the top or the bottom, or if it's an Economy 7 one, or if they've got some sort of photovoltaic solar panel system set up, they might have two. You might have a top one and a bottom one. But for the indirect hot water cylinders, that doesn't matter. The main heat source comes from heated water from the boiler. Now that heated water comes up, it usually goes through a two port or a three port valve, which is gonna direct hot water through a coil inside that hot water cylinder. Now that is the main thing that differentiates it from a direct cylinder. The water comes up from the boiler through our control valve, according to the thermostat and the time clock that's on that system, and then it goes through that coil and the waters, the two bodies of water, don't mix at all. You've got the hot water from your boiler, which if it hasn't been inhibited properly, is gonna be all black and manky. And also, let's face it, even if it has, no one wants to be washing in the water that comes out of a radiator, all right? So that water is kept inside that coil, nice and hot, usually gets introduced at sort of 75 degrees, maybe 80 degrees, which is the boiler temperature coming out, and then it transfers its heat into the hot water okay, that you're gonna be washing in and the water that comes out of the tap. And then usually on the side of an indirect tank, you've got a little thermostat and that usually gets set at roughly 55 degrees. So when it gets up to 55 degrees, it signals to the control valve to shut off the flow of hot water to the hot water coil going through the tank and also it tells the boiler and the pump to go off. And that is what an indirect hot water tank does. It effectively has two sources of heat. The direct source, which is what you'd say was the immersion heaters that are in it, and the indirect source, which is what you'd say is the boiler somewhere else in the house, which is putting hot water and it's being circulated through a coil in the tank, just like that. I mean, if we look inside this absolutely knackered indirect tank here, you'll clearly see the coil inside the tank there that has hot water flowing from the heating system and the boiler going through it and then back out of the tank again, transferring its heat into the water that you're going to wash in. If we look at the direct tank to this side, it's so much more simpler. There is no coil. You don't have a coil coming from the boiler. There's nothing like that. All you have is usually a immersion heater at the bottom and sometimes an immersion heater at the top as well. This is especially common on Economy 7 systems and Economy 10 systems. The, the difference between the 7 and the 10 is purely how much of a cheap rate you have in electricity. The idea being is the top immersion heater is a boost immersion heater. So say you get back, I don't know, 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning and uh, you're at a high rate of electricity, uh, but you still want a bath, 
you press that boost and all it's going to try and do is effectively kind of heat the top part of the cylinder up but then at night when you've got a lower rate of electricity um, you have what's called a night setback immersion which is the bottom one and what that does is that comes on when the electricity rate is nice and low and it heats the whole tank up just like that so you'd say that because you've got those two immersion heaters in there like that that it's a direct source there and then and that's it it's a direct cylinder but I hear you say, James, from Plumber Parts. Yeah. There is also immersion heaters in that one. Isn't that a direct source? Well, yes, it is, and you're right. But a lot of people use the immersions in an indirect hot water cylinder as either a backup, or if it's summertime, they'll turn their boiler off and just use the electricity. Personally, I don't do that uh, because I don't have photovoltaic panels on my house yet. Believe me, as soon as I get photovoltaic on my house, I'm going to start using the energy of the sun to heat up my hot water rather than all the fossil fuel from my boiler. And that's the difference. And it's the same for vented and unvented hot water cylinders. All right, that's helped you out, guys. So I hope that explanation there has helped you out. I mean, it is a very simple one. We've done a lot of videos on plumbing, as you guys know. I mean, over way over 200 videos now. And it is like a simple one that we probably should have covered, I don't know, six or seven years ago. But it just keeps coming up in the apprentice questions. And I like to help apprentices out. Guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Please subscribe, like I said. Do follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. We also run a Snapchat account, which usually I only sort of put stuff out on when I've had a bit of a skimful, but there we go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. I hope you learned a little bit more about indirect and direct hot water cylinders. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you in our next video. Remember, everyone, to hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber. And once we, and once we explain some... Oh, a La Crusade mug. Ah. <laughs> ah, focus on my face.